Bear Element, Episode 3, recorded 9 May, 2012. I think it's going to be a lively night. <laughs> I don't know. It's either me or everybody. but It's like a mu- musical episode. It's it that is? feeling when the summer comes, when everyone's excited. Why is it a musical episode? Well, we have a very musical guest that we'll have That's in the true. last half hour. But, you know, we talked about making this the singing episode, and that got shot Ixnade. down. And yeah. by, but when I say we, we talked about it, that I, Clay, talked about it. <laughs> And I even demoed it, and it still got shot down. Yeah. So we should introduce yeah. ourselves so people know our voices. Okay. So this is Tim. This is Vito. And this is Mike. And this is Clay. Okay, so. There's, and then there's Wolfgang. There's Wolfie, our sixth element, fifth element. Sixth, fifth. Fifth. fifth <laughs> Matt, <laughs> who's the fifth? Math is hard. <laughs> God, you got it. And it's a momentous day because our president... The That's first right. sitting president in the history of the United States of America, or any country for that matter. Well, maybe not any country. That's not true. I don't he, even know if the Prime Minister of England has said what he said. No. He's evolving. That was the word that <laughs> well, that's the word that was being used today. Evolving. Well, that's what was used yesterday. Oh was what? evolving. Today He evolved. He evolves, yeah. Okay, so today Game President Obama went. did an interview in which he actually came out right outright and said that he supports gay marriage. So Woo-hoo. it's I mean, we're recording here in the Castro. There's several news crews who are out, you know, interviewing people on the street here. So I don't know. We'll see if it's going to be. They're going to march. Over here they're going to march 18th and Castro night. Whenever there's a big thing. Like oh this, yeah. Do. What do you think Romney's doing? <sighs> oh, nice breath. Praying to his father, what he's Father doing. God, on the planet Xenon or whatever. He the probably hell. is <laughs> clueless to it all. Yeah. No, he's well, going he's, yes. Well, he's reiterated today that he's not for gay marriage. One of the things that I thought was funny as a part of that interview today, Obama, he said, well, I have the same stand I've always had on same-sex marriage um, I've had since running for president. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, the stance that he said when he was running for president was, well, I'm, I'm, my stance is evolving on it. You but know, in other words, he believed in it before he became president. Right. So but, it was just... But it was, politics is politics. Well, but right. what put the fire under his butt was Biden coming out and saying it. Yeah. With his, that was yeah. why. And then he, I think he felt yeah, he a little bit of pressure. Yeah, off. Biden says all sorts of yeah. crazy things. He didn't have to do this. Well, people online today were so excited. Like, in one minute, I saw... Everyone posting um, Obama's speech, Everyone. but then ten minutes later, I saw a whole different wave of like, like, come on, let's let's see what you're gonna do about it. This b- Obama talks bullshit. So well, it was kind of roller coaster. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was like I saw today. like a whole shift. Well, because of the North Carolina, what was it called? The Amendment, the Amendment One. one. The Amendment One in North Carolina. Yeah, and then the, now the Obama to... thing the same day. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's. I, as far as my emotional thing, like my thought process when I heard about it, I was like, wow, that's really great. And I hope he just didn't lose the election. So all the polls that show that the vast majority of Americans are for gay marriage. But if you look, when you at, look the at the polling, country at the whole. But I mean, if you look at the polling, at least for Prop 8 here in California, they're like all the polling prior to that was very much in favor of gay marriage. So, um, Either what it was is that either the people that were for gay marriage didn't find it important enough to get out and actually vote to, well, who, to not pass who the actually th- Who actually thought that that was going to go down in flames like it did? I mean, that was a surprise. What, and, the Prop 8 was passed? Right. And, and you know, the... the um, and and that's the, that was the wake up call, and I think that's why it's going to be all hands on deck election. I think I remember reading some. some well, we've got to something like that. remember that voting is very generational, and the older people vote more than the younger people. Wise. Really, I think I, I swear I saw statistics that younger people are voting a lot more these well, they, days. Well, they are these days, but traditionally. And older people go to the yeah. polls, specifically when they part have of the, country the more conservative live. views. Well, my mother was still alive. All I ever did when I went to the polls was undo her vote <laughs> i'm like mom did you vote today all right i'm gonna go and undo your vote thank you well, i think there's oh, also right. another right another segment there where there's a lot of people like when they're out polling whatever you know they'll say one thing because they don't want to sound bigoted in person but once they get behind you know actually out there voting i think a lot of people are are more free to be their 
bigoted cells. Yeah. So yeah. He, Obama probably scared people today. His speech was good, though. He said he looked around his like administrative, and the now that don't ask, don't tell is gone. And he looked around at uh, like the people that work in the White House, and he sees a lot of like same sex couples. And he just didn't feel right unless he came out and said this today. Wow. So it was it was a, it was a good. It, I actually read the whole little speech, and it was it was it was big. I mean, it was definitely like probably speech made by like somebody else, but he delivered it very well. And then I read the article about the I keep bumping the mic. Uh, the log cabin Republicans came out and said they were not so impressed. Yes, underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Oh, yeah. so typical. Do you guys know any gay guys, gay couples that uh, identify as Republicans? No not couples, but I know I know a few gay guys that identify as log cabin Republicans. No one that let into my house. <laughs> yeah, I no. do, and it just it just it's, horrifies me, and I just can't understand them. It's yeah, I don't it's a self hatred, and it just it blows me away. Well, that goes into the whole like. Enemies. Well, I, I don't think it's necessarily that cut and dry because I mean, there's a lot of stuff as far as. Um, that Republicans stand for at its core that has absolutely nothing to do with the religious right. Well, that's that's gone. They've been hijacked. Yeah. The Republican oh, I, I Party has been you, hijacked. But there's still a lot of people that will still hold on to the ideals of what they were really supposed to Physical. be. Physical. I, w- I was hijacked. a Republican until I was 30, till I came out. Why? Because I lived in Orange County, and Republicans like, used to be physical, you know, conservatism <laughs> and you are low like taxes fear, like and, kinda? you know, and things like that, yeah. and it made sense to me. And then when I found out all the terrible things that they do, and, you know, and I came out, and all of a sudden I was into human rights. What do you know? Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> and then what was, what day did the North Carolina Amendment 1... That was today, too. Banned. Well, that, it passed that was, on Tuesday. Yesterday was when they were... So at they polls. banned gay marriage uh-huh. and actually took away civil civil union rights, I believe, too. It wasn't just the ban. Like, if anyone had civil rights at that time or uh, civil unions, they took them away as well. Wow. I should know that, but I don't. Yeah. And also, like, the last time anything like this was voted on in the past was, like, when blacks were not allowed to marry whites. So it's, I like those connections because you're like, wow, these things are changing and moving really fast, but... Not in North Carolina. I don't know. I really hope this is like that turning point. I think it like is. The turning point moment or the election in November is like that turning point moment of when we can finally say that, you know, one of the last hurdles of really, you know, civil rights is, you know, expanded upon. Yeah. If yeah. Well, and, and I think that it'll be the federal government or the courts that are going to make that a national issue. Well, Prop 8 still sitting in court somewhere, too. It's not like decided. I'm high in entertainment, low on politics. We can momentous, do. momentous day, momentous yeah. day, and you know, hopefully, like you said, to be the tipping point. I'd, I'd like to see that. And we'll so. see what happens in the next next couple of days. Actually, right before I came here tonight, there's another senator who just also came out in support of. Um, it was a senator from Democrat from Rhode Island who also, right after Obama, came out in, in support of. Um, gay marriage, so I think there's might They're be all like, coming out. Well, I think there might be a trickle effect, <laughs> for sure. This was, like, right afterwards. You mean well, you can be in favor of gay marriage and not be gay? Yeah. Well, I mean, look at, look at you know, what happened when Bill Clinton was the first sitting president to use the word AIDS. Yeah. You know, I mean, how much has changed? Well, he's also the one that did Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I just think he didn't know it was going to turn out the way that he yeah, that, that was, ended that up was turning a, out. a bit but. of a kerfuffle. Oh, <laughs> well, that was... Don't... <laughs> That was, well, that was a fiasco is what it ended up being, but I mean, it was something that was supposed to be something at least positive that um, people could get in, could be in the military and be gay as long as people didn't know about it, but it ended up turning into this big witch hunt. Yeah, that people They were allowed to, you know, start questioning people or like if people found out. Um, Which probably caused like tons of suicides. People are so no, well, fearful. Everything right. caused. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what's and all, interesting, yeah. too, is it was right around the time when people started posting stuff in social media, right. and there were a lot of people that were outed that way. Like pictures being identified, or... Or they, I think they would follow them to bars. Uh, well, that's always been the case, but... Yeah. yeah. Well, um, since we talked about momentous days and sitting presidents talking about things that nobody's ever talked about before, and we talked about Bill Clinton and AIDS... Well, certainly a lot has changed about that. Some things haven't, and we still have a need to um, deal with the HIV and AIDS situation. And so one of us is getting ready 
to start uh, training for something. Want to talk about that? That was a smooth transaction. Yeah. That was one hell of a segue. I that know. Was that, long. Was, that was better than Oprah. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know where we were going. I was like, fuck, I didn't even bring my hiking boots for this trip. <laughs> a, friend, a friend of mine was listening to it. He's like, uh, you're bossy on that. <laughs> no, you're smooth. You're like velvet. Take a charge. You're like a velvet throat. So, uh, so this is Tim, and, and I've decided with um, the inspiration of my partner who's doing the AIDS Life Cycle Ride this year, that I'm going to do it next year. Woohoo! He's already said that he wants to do it next year, and so it's it's something that I've told myself for years that it's something that I want to do. Um, Me too, but I'm scared to death. N- well, it's such yeah. good training. I've never done it. This is Mike, but I've not, not done it. But it's such good training, and it's such good like mm-hmm. camaraderie and teamwork and fundraising. Okay, and I don't care what you've heard. All you need to know is that um, they go they show. go to the old west bakery and they have kick-ass cinnamon rolls so who does if the they the aids life cycle they stop in this little town i forget the name of the town they stop in lompoc is that the one you're thinking of no this is the it's right on the coast What's i thought it? this was tim's story anyway <laughs> tim can you even ride a bike yes i can ride a bike i actually own a bike too so i just it's like i said it's something that i've been wanting to do for a long time and just never really had a real reason to get out mm-hmm. I didn't have, I guess, the proper inspiration. Is it one of those things that make it on your like New Year's resolution list every year? Almost like no, this year I'm gonna. Like that. It was just something like I eventually world. want to do it. So yeah. now I'm doing it, and it's I'm sort of like at the edge of that generation where like of people who had a lot of loved ones who died of AIDS, and I fortunately haven't lost anybody to AIDS, you know, and so. But I have a lot of older friends who were a part of the whole crisis in the 80s when, right, right. when their friends were dying left and right, and they just sort of got introverted and stopped making friends because you didn't know if they were going to die in a few weeks. Um, I never thought of that. So it's basically for my friends that lost so many loved ones during the AIDS crisis of the 80s, those, that's who I'm doing the AIDS ride for. It's, it's neat because every t- year when it comes up, like, of course, I noticed all the fundraising because I get like 50 emails, people wanting money, which I mean, I can't complain when it's for like such a cause, but I like it because it keeps it current, keeps it every year, like brings it up, you know what I mean? Like HIV and AIDS, it's current, it's, mm-hmm. it's not just, it's not done. Well, that, that is one of the points. So, yeah, to keep, to it, keep it in the forefront. On your mouth. It's interesting, too, because, you know, the dynamics have really changed. I mean, it's, it's, a lot of people don't consider HIV or AIDS a death sentence anymore. They consider it to be a manageable disease, but that requires money and you know health insurance and things that many people yeah. don't and have. It still, is a shorter lifespan. But and things, but the yeah, and the, you know, and lots and, of doctor visits, and there there are lots of intense side effects from these drugs. Yeah, and the health. I know someone who is on a specific medicine, and he. I've seen his insurance, and it's like twelve thousand dollars something, but he doesn't pay anything because his insurance takes care of it. But I'm just like, if he had lost insurance, he wouldn't be able to take his medicine. Right. So it's really Absolutely. just intense. So it does need to, the prices need to be brought down. Yeah. So it's, but the fact that so many people are still getting infected is very sobering to me. Um, I did a yeah. internship in health education my last year of college, and we were going out and handing out condoms at a time when people were like, "Oh my God, they didn't even want to be seen in public with a condom." And we were, when incoming freshmen would come in, we'd give talks and go to the dorms and show them, you know, it doesn't matter how big your cock is, this will fit, and you could stretch it out over your head, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but wow. but now, I mean, condoms are. Yeah, you know, there's no, there doesn't seem to be a lot of stigma to them. So, Did you ever hear about that that myth? Like, there's like bug chasing parties. You ever hear about that? I brought that up once myth. on my website, and there's actually like, uh, someone said it was a myth, but I thought I read it. Like, there's actually people going to these specific parties having sex to become positive, mm-hmm. like bug chasing parties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not yeah. a myth. What? Because yeah. they think no, they're going to end up getting it anyway. Well, yeah, they just they, they want to control whatever. their destiny. Is one yeah. of the things right. that I heard. They, but then uh, they create rather, a super bug, a, a super. Uh, I'd rather knowing people who have passed. Rather, rather put a gun to their head and shoot them. I mean, oh I'm, my god! Uh, <laughs> disclaimer: I don't have a gun. I feel the same way <laughs> about people gun. smoking. It's like, yeah, really, you know what it does to you. What about nurses that smoke. Uh, tangent. Okay, Ooh. I saw a nurse earlier smoking. I'm like, what? Uh, oh, well, oh. it's gotten a little heavy, but at the the crux of all this is. Congratulations, Tim! You're finally, no. finally doing. He was doing something. He's going to do it with me. 
We've happen. run out of time to talk about who's going to join Tim on the AIDS life Tim, cycle. Tim, text me. So, boing. <laughs> let's move on to something. Yes, fun. definitely. We um, sometimes we've been doing like an either or question, so now I think we might make it this a regular thing. That. This or that. So this segment's either or question is da, 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 cut. Or uncut. Whether we are or what we prefer. Yes. Both. Can Vito go first? He's always good at warming us up. Go, please. Go, Vito. Unless I don't know okay. anything about Vito. Well, I can answer. I can answer. I can answer because I've, I've seen Vito naked. He's yeah. uh, he's cut. Uh, yes, I am cut. Where did you see naked? About what we went to the banya. Or what we are. Yes. Both. Wait, oh, at okay. Steamworks? Yes. No, the banya. Archimedes. Oh, the Russian banya. Oh, what's that? We have to. It's, we have to do that. We have to all go to the bar. Yeah, be fun. it's really yeah. fun. Um, uh, yeah, really cool. <laughs> um, One time at band camp, I really prefer cut guys. Um, I had an incident where a gentleman was visiting from. <laughs> by the Wolfie. way, Wolfie. Is by cut the way, Wolfie. Go either way. In his little time sign here, is, uh, informed us that he is cut. But we've all seen him naked on the prefer? internet, anyways. You prefer guys that are preference. Oh. Hmm. I can go either or. Okay. He just um, likes the cock. It's funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> Put the cock in the mouth. Um, Isn't there a song I was like hanging that? out like with the cocks, guy. the cocks that are cut, Rakisha and Bunny, and we like the cock? No, that's a different song. Um, a, anyway, or detachable I penis. Like mm. Mm. Anyway, um, so, uh, yes, I prefer, because I, they're very stinky. Cut, uh, uncut even cocks clean or, ones? or sting, even clean ones. I've only of the ones I've encountered, I've only encountered one that was not stinky. So this, this that is has just some sort of smell. Have you been to England? Turtle next and no, and because in England there's a lot of uncut us. cocks and they're quite clean. Oh really? Like yes. the guy that I had my hand on at the Lone Star um, was stinky. Ew. Well, maybe you shouldn't have had your hand. That's well, I was thinking about inside. moving to England one of these days, but I'm, I'm rethinking that. So you'll never, um, what's well, the thing where you put uncut cock up against well, uncut cock and well. it's like you go back and forth? Um, oh, snoodling? <laughs> no, snoodling. Um, docking. 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 Snoodling. 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 I just imagine like, the sound of a backing up truck. <laughs> <laughs> I just think about Soyuz and Apollo. Maybe I'm dating myself here. <laughs> yes, tonight. you are. Uh, we yeah. should talk about his cock tonight. Tim. So, Tim, cut Wait, or uncut? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mixing it up. Blue eyes well, over there. Well, let's just... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... Do a little bit of air mystique. You can, okay. If somebody wants to really find some photos of me online, they're not hard to find. Dude, I'm nude. Just gonna, as far as myself. So, so what do you prefer, Coy, Tim? Typically, I've actually always preferred cut, but lately I've been um, expanding dirty my whore. horizons. Dirty whore. <laughs> dirty whore. Dirty whore. A second what Mike says, you're a dirty whore. Hi, this is Clay, and I'm cut. And um, Welcome, I like Clay. clean. Welcome, Clay. Welcome, I like Clay. clean. Yes. <laughs> My name's Clay. I like cut. <laughs> but I like clean cocks, so I Curve. don't really care if they're cut or uncut. They just got to be clean. It's got to be clean. And uh, my experience in the UK is they're all quite clean. The ones, really? The ones that I've encountered. Maybe because they're, they're oh my. better educated in cleaning their turtlenecks out. Right. Turtlenecks. Yes. <laughs> hmm. They don't have a lot of showers there. They don't? No, they take baths. I've had sex with some really, well, I wouldn't say sex, but I've encountered some really spunky foreskins that have just like right. haven't been washed and just really cheesy and all that. And it's just like, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't get into the cheese. Cheese. Oh, um, yeah, that's really bad. This is Mike, Mikey. and um, my foreskin was stolen from me. And June fifth, nineteen seventy two. He is so um, California. So he stole that. Um, but preference wise, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of experience with uncut cocks. I really? don't like, and so I don't really have a preference. I don't want to. But I don't want to. You know, I have a lot daddy, of experience with cocks. I not find that. Uncut. Oh, okay. Now I'm back in. I'm, I'm back actually. In, um, so I don't really have a preference, although. I've Between smelled a back and stinky board. ones Between before. Between a back and boy. Back and board. And the funny thing about uncut or un- uh, cocks, um, cut or uncut, a friend of mine had a baby about five years ago, and as she was pregnant, she called and asked me what I th- what I prefer, because she figured I saw more cocks than anyone else. And you told her what? <laughs> I said uncut. I, th- I always, I'm on the team of leave it alone. Okay, all right. I'm on the team of leave it alone. I actually asked my parents, uh, I asked my dad why 
I got circumcised, and he goes, oh, your mom took care of all that this stuff. I didn't have anything thing, yeah. to do with that. Nah, I think yeah. a lot more people are not getting is cut these cut? days. I believe so, yeah. Is he hung? <laughs> <laughs> girth or no girth? I suggest that you don't talk about your relatives in front of Mike because he'll immediately get a crush on them. Yeah. Oh. Just, yeah, as, just like as Tim's brother. brother. Right. Well, he was sexting you, not me. So, uh-oh, you not believe me asked those do you think questions. John Travolta's massage therapist is cut or uncut? Ooh, Ooh, Ooh. but I know the size of John's cock from a alleged, alleged, alleged size of his cock. Alleged is cock. No, not alleged about? size of his cock. Alleged. <laughs> the size of his alleged <laughs> cock. <laughs> what are we alleging here? <laughs> so, so our new topic, ding, 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 gay celebrities. Oh. And there have been a couple in the news recently. And the closet. John Travolta's second nuisance lawsuit. How shocking. It can't be true. His lawyer says it's not true. And then, because he's proving, well, the thing about today, like, he's produced these receipts that says he's placed them in New York at a restaurant or something <laughs> with a very generous tip. So they say, like, that's why he <laughs> wasn't at the same place. Generous the tip. Masseuse. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, but the second mm, massage the therapist tip. came out today and said, like, it's really funny, the details. They said that John had a, had an eight-ish inch cock. This was in, like, Gawker or something like that, dot com. Eight-ish. And they also said something about his pubic hair. They said his pubic hair was wiry. Allegedly. Allegedly wiry and unkept. <laughs> I really think that's really funny. Kept, oh my goodness, it's not cold. And they said, like, the second... Mr. Travolta, you're a star. You can keep that up. They okay. said he was moving, <laughs> they said he was moving his butt around as if he wanted his butt played with, allegedly. Allegedly. And that, was allegedly. that was the well, second one. I've I've trained as a massage therapist, and one of the things that we learned was that people react in all different ways. Farts, cut. Exactly. Arms. And well, that's right. Mike, Mike's a massage therapist. I'm talking to you like, well, let yeah. me tell you from my experience. Yeah, we'll do it. So, but, and when I was doing my final practical exam, the, one of the leaders of the school, big strapping black man, boom, you know, got a big old heart on. And what was really funny is I just took the sheet and I tucked it, tucked it under his butt cheeks and, you know, pinned it down and he started laughing he's oh my god nobody's ever done that i'm like well that thing's in my way i can't work with this yeah. and, he's, <laughs> and, you know, and he was just really laughing and like the staff came over and they're like what is going on this is supposed to be a final exam you're supposed to be serious in there yeah, he's got yeah. a heart on well so, this just plays with the whole that like not even about massage just like his winky. john being gay or not Allegedly. Allegedly. Well, this pisses me off because I'm always like mad at people when they're like oh tom cruise is gay this person's allegedly. gay allegedly but this is just sounds. He's got well, busted. Do you have to be gay to um, participate in a, a, a gay a gay function like a pride celebration? No, not at all. Tim was talking about an allegedly. But to get your cock. Is this? Oh, is yeah, this, that, oh this is another one of your transitions. Isn't yeah, it? that's a segue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you have to be gay and want to touch someone. <laughs> like John, he's allegedly like touching some. Try to grab someone's cock and try to put someone's hand on his, and so he, well, you have to be gay well, to do that. Kinsey, the Kinsey scale, I mean, it goes, there are a lot of guys that like to have oh. sex with guys that are married, but have sex yeah. with their wives, too. Well, one final thing that I read, he's, I guess he said to one of the therapists, allegedly, was, allegedly that he said, the way, the reason why he got where he was is because, like, in um, Welcome Back Cotter Days, he serviced all these guys, and then he kind of said that all the um, people who are controlling Hollywood are, like, homo Jews. Anyways. That was that was in uh, quotes <laughs> from who? Homo from Jews? John John Travolta said that to one Allegedly? of the therapists. Is that a Allegedly. contraction or is it hyphenated? It was all it was Homo in quotes, Jews. like the from John. He was telling him how like oh everyone in Hollywood's run by homosexual Jews, anyways. So as if that was going to be a that's interesting. I've heard I never that made before, the though. association with the two. I have like yeah. Well, of all the things that John Travolta has been accused of being gay is the least of my worries. You know, the Scientology. <laughs> yeah. And the Scientologists, if I remember correctly, are not into the homos at all. They I'm don't not, like them. I, I dated a Scientologist, and he they were... He oh, shot. how does that work out for Tom Cruise? Hmm. Well, hmm. oh, wait, so they, they're, they're not... Are they okay or not okay with homos? Well, d- we were in Hawaii, and they were totally cool with it. I came to functions as his partner, and huh. it was all coolio. I don't know. Well, who knows? We may get a just because we've talked about them. We may get a cease and desist letter. They're, yes, who knows? They're very uh, aggressive. 
<laughs> Comment on Facebook, boys. But we, yes. <laughs> but we don't have any money. Oh, they've so lost interest. <laughs> yeah, we do not have a dime. Thank you very much. See, I'm so, not convinced that he was gay, but until today, now I feel like I am convinced. What about the you know, picture of him kissing, kissing the guy getting on the, on the plane. plane? I don't believe. I could think that could have been like it's some Greek. story. It's Greek. It's I still don't think Tom Cruise is gay either. Allegedly. I know. I, I must be the only one, but I don't think Tom Cruise is gay. I'm not convinced. I want him to be. I actually have a Tom Cruise story that I'm not going to tell you, but I'll tell you. If you Allegedly. come up to me and ask me, I'll tell you the story. It's Let's talk amazing. about ladies. Do you have any lady gays we can talk about? Well, there was the whole thing like, on Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> Royalty. There was this reports, you know, all over the internet. Dun, 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 dun. Queen Latifah finally comes out as gay. Again? <laughs> yes, again. So I was like, really? What? So, I mean, I don't, it's not like I keep up on Queen Latifah so much. So, like, she, I went and did a search for, how, for yes. like, where it came from, like, if she was gay. Right. Yeah. And then I find out that there's, like, for, from, like, 2009, 2000, almost every year that comes out, Queen Latifah finally comes out as gay. And, like, so apparently this time what it is, she's, um, she's signed on to be the headliner at this gay pride celebra- celebration in Southern California. And so everybody's like, oh, she's gay. I'm like, no, that don't make you gay. Yeah, it doesn't no. make you yeah. gay. Didn't make Cindy Lauper gay when she was the... Cindy's know, the bomb. Up here for, for San Francisco gay right. pride. So. Well, I mean, you know, and there was something about her buying a house with her trainer, and uh, now she came out. I, you know, this I mean, I, it's not that I, it's not, I would be surprised if she wasn't a lesbian. But, I mean, just because somebody's signing on to do something like that, I don't think that's grounds for, oh my God, they came out. Oh my that God. falls in the line of gay straight alliance. Um, but I, I swear, I'm going to Google it. I thought she was on the Oprah show and came out as a lesbian to Oprah, and that makes it official. <laughs> you say something to Oprah, God Winfrey. I don't remember that. I think she did. I have to Google it. Well, God knows you have a lot of time on your hands to Google it. In between your naps and shit. Two naps. <laughs> Who are Take some other naps, celebrities sir. that are allegedly gay? Well, I'm gay. Uh, <laughs> well, you're, <laughs> you're a minor oh, celebrity. Gay. <laughs> you're a minor celebrity. Oh, that kind of Unless your cock is in my mouth. Big play. time celebrity. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Did say, Mike, say that uh, the very first episode of it, The Mold. The mold. Would you say, I want to mold you, Clay? <laughs> oh, I want to mold you, Clay. Well, you got to say it in the mic, though. Why? I don't, I don't remember because cause it's Clay. I want to mold him, Clay. <laughs> I just like the way it sounds. I want to come over to your house and get, get, put you in a nice, warm bath and get I, you all I like softened the, up and mold. I like the way you say you, it because Clay. when Vito says it, sounds you. like he's trying to say I'm old as mold. And no, I would never say that to, to your face. face. <laughs> <laughs> you were raised better Turn than that. My mama raised me better. Are you guys drinking alcohol? <laughs> no, there's yeah. water on the table. I want some snacks. There are snacks. snacks. There's ginger snacks. There's cheese snacks. There's chocolate snacks. Crinkle, crinkle. Crinkle, crinkle, the snacky crinkles. So, any other um, allegedly gay celebrities that we want to talk about? I don't think so. Don't know, was there anybody else that's come up in the news over the past couple of weeks? No. Pretty much. No. Just this John thing, it's blown up. Actually, I would love to be in John Travolta's house tonight. Just to see the tension in the air, like, you know what I mean? I wish I could, like, sneak in at John's house and watch what's happening at their house tonight. What's his wife's name again? Um, Not Lisa. C- what is it? What's what's John Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Preston. Preston? Kelly Preston, right? Kelly Preston. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be some tension there. I could imagine her in the kitchen just chopping vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> well, Silence. You know, you know um, they're so rich. She just probably doesn't lift a lift a, you know her hand at all. Well, honestly, I think I think we've probably killed that subject. So why don't we take a little bit of a break and we'll come right back and we can always edit that out. I'm gonna go take a there. deuce. And um, <laughs> so. Is there a pause button you can hit or anything? Okay. And we're, we're back. back. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm eating peanut butter. Of course you are. Oh, good timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. We All have right. more people in the room now, too. Well, we do? Yes, mm-hmm. Vito, would you like to introduce our guest? Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Zephos. <sighs> There's some, there's some ladies listening? <laughs> I don't know. There might be. I did, did I not use the ladies' room during the break? We're non-gender specific. Because that's okay. what ladies do. Okay. Sometimes my penis, when it's not grown, it looks kind of like an extended clitoris. Uh, oh. I that was not an F to M. Like, that's attractive. I, TMI. I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know Let's what that edit like, that. So. Okay, anyways. <laughs> duh, erase, edit. <laughs> well, that's our first question, is detailed sex life. Yes. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, we just met in person to person, but I really feel like you could roll with the punches. 
Well, we'll see. And we'll see how it goes. Person too. He's used to being around a mic, I think. Oh. Uh, uh, several. We have a mic. Yeah. Oh. 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 Mike, Mike. Fun yeah. Coach. I'm the fire. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Watch that crunching there, young man. <laughs> and, uh, thanks for being our guest. We love to have you. Sure. I, I'm not good with numbers when it gets up to like two. Or three. <laughs> I I restate from earlier. Math is hard. Math is hard. Yeah. Yeah. God, you guys. So, do we want to grill him? Yes. Yeah. Let's what do you guys want to talk about? I want to. It's, know what, it's we wanna, your podcast. We want to so. find out about you. I want to know what you're currently working on. Ten minutes. Um. <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, this is kind of a weird thing, but uh, I, I was thinking about it as driving over here. I, I was sort of like wanted to turn it around. I mean, does anybody here have a story about me? Like about oh. how? I mean, because ultimately, hmm. I've been sort of around this thing for a while, and I've been mm-hmm. sort of like a public figure in the sort of bear community, like San Francisco for, bear bay community, or. No, no, no. I Just mean, well, okay, so... Universal bear community. Yeah, in the universal bear community. You seem much more universal to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, I've been sort of a public figure in, in some circles for about 20 years now. I mean, people have known about me for a while. So I was just wondering if you guys first had that, if any of you had that. No, I well, just heard you you're know. a great guy and you do your music thing. I, I actually okay. came up with well, some questions. I, I was... first saw you on stage with Bob Mould at the Barracuda four-year anniversary party. Okay, so that was a couple of years ago. Yeah, or... that was the fourth year, so that's a couple of years okay, ago. Yeah, That was when I put it together. I was like, oh, because I knew you'd... Has distortion been along, around yeah, that long? Yeah, that's been up for a couple years as well. Because I knew that, and then I, was, then I put the face oh, to okay. it. And I was like, oh, he's actually a musician as well, and that's when I did so. Some so you don't know that I was in this band in the 90s called King Missile? I didn't at the time, no. Oh, okay. With a detachable penis. Right, and did you know... At so, the time, I didn't. Oh, oh, at the time, you didn't. Okay. and We, uh, we actually you, did our homework. But you had heard of King Missile. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a little punk rocker in high school, so oh, okay. I knew all so that stuff. Oh, okay, so you knew about that. Yeah. Right. I mean, you never saw King Missile, or you never no. saw any videos no. or anything like that. Not that I remember. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry if I feel like I'm doing the no, no. asking the questions. But, <laughs> I love questions. You know, well, you know, we, I mean, we... it's just kind of like I, I just kind of wanted to get a, a sense of how because it's kind of a weird thing. I mean, to a certain extent, I am a celebrity, and then to to a certain extent, I'm not. You know, there are times when I'll meet guys, and it'll it'll be like oh, you know oh i'm chris you know i'm chris whatever oh hey how's it going you whatever yeah. they have no idea and then there are other guys so i'm like oh my god ah, yeah it's chris well know. that's the other thing if someone knows files, you right. as from your uh, like djing stuff or other music stuff or your association with like distortion like i'm just saying because like with bob mold i know i think some people know bob just from oh my god you're the dj from blow off and right. then I grew up with Husker Du and stuff like that. So yeah. when I hear, I have a different association. Oh yeah, sure. You know sure. what I mean? But, but I mean, you know, I mean, again, it's it's kind of like, right? Exactly. There's just right. Different people have different associations. But again, since I've been sort of around for a while, I just thought, you know, like, you know, where, you know, where is yeah. you know, where where's everybody here? I just on, met you at page. PEX in San Diego and thought you were a cool guy. And then I knew you had something to do with, with music. Yeah, and Vito, I've known about you forever. Everybody knows Vito. Oh, nice. Vito. Everybody Vito. knows Vito. Vito. I mean, you know, exactly. I was just saying earlier. For like, different associations, too, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, how many, you know, gay Vito. How, many, how many gay Vitos are there? You know, how many gay was one. air Vitos? I know were, one. You know, exactly. There is I know one. one. There was one in the Sopranos, and he got killed for coming out. Uh, whatever. <laughs> oh, he was the gay Vito that got killed? Oh, that's funny. the Sopranos, yeah. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's fictitious. Yes, yeah, so that is. Yeah. Now, no, is, no, it was on is TV, Phantom so Tollbooth, was that your first band that you produced, or were you yeah, in that, that was band? The first, that was the first band that uh, that I produced, um, uh, friends of mine from Long Island. And, uh, I mean, you know, I wanted to be a producer for a long time. I mean, uh, basically when I found out what a producer does. And so I kind of sort of directed myself towards that even though it's kind of a weird thing to kind of direct yourself towards. Like, you know, being a producer seems like an odd choice. Well, real quickly, what does a music producer do? Uh, what a music producer does is that they're kind of the guy that's sort of the central uh, person responsible for recording. Like, for instance, in the old days, what a producer would do, um, you know, back in the 50s or something, is that they would, they would pick the artist, they would pick the songwriter, they would, get the, they would pick the musicians, they would put the whole thing sort of together. The I whole mean, recipe. Yeah, well, like... right, exactly. I mean, it's sort of like what like a television producer does. 
uh, to a certain extent, where they just put all those things together, um, and they're not necessarily um, part of the the artistry of it. Whereas producers over the years have kind of changed and became a little bit more of artists artists on their own, and so you know that's why I I thought like oh well this is kind of the avenues as far as artistry that I want to kind of pursue. So we're actually having. <laughs> We've been playing around with our mixer, our board. Uh-huh. Look at we can Sorry, use some special advice. <laughs> I'm, I'm avoiding it on purpose, if you guys have noticed. Apparently, it has something to do with math because it's like really hard. It's got all these knobs <laughs> on it and pretty lights and. And you, and you would think we would know knobs. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> Who are you? Are you working with anybody locally now? Like I saw Pansy Division. Are they still uh, we, a band and around like this? Because I, I remember them from well, I mean, years ago. P- Pansy Division is still a band, um, although the members are actually now based all they across switched? the country. Okay, okay, I thought so. Um, and, um, but I worked with them when everybody was still here in San Francisco. Oh, okay, okay. And, um, yeah, we worked on, and it was uh, 2003, I think it was, or Yeah, because I remember them from, like, the yeah. 90s. Yeah, so exactly, I was surprised yeah. to know that they were still, Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, well, I, I mean, they've done... Uh, an album and uh, sort of a a uh, <clears throat> what do they call it? Not a greatest hits, but you know the best they, of? yeah a best of kind of thing. Uh, they did you know since the album that I did in two thousand three. So they, I mean they they're they still doing stuff, right? Right. You know, but uh, yeah, but we worked on an album together because uh, my roommate at the time was the guitar player in Pansy Division. So ah, oh, got it. It's a small uh, world. Yeah. yeah, and you're 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 still producing quite actively. You just helped. Or worked with Shannon Grady, right? Right, yeah. I mean, Shannon is a friend of mine uh, that I think you know from San Diego. I do. Um, you know, I mean, Shannon is also famous for having a podcast as well. You That's know. right. That would be B Talk. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, and then Shannon, uh, we've been wanting to, uh, Shannon's been wanting to work with me for a while, and he finally, he finally got his act together <laughs> to do that. And, um, yeah, we had a great time. It was a crazy, uh, like, weekend, basically, that we kind of finished putting together his new record. Um, although there's, there was time before and time after that, but mm-hmm. you know, doing pretty, a much, pretty much it was a very intense weekend. I hear that a lot about, like, people with their records, and they suddenly do their best work. Like, they have all this time to do it, then all of a sudden they lock themselves in a lock cabin for one weekend, produce everything, and then come back and... Like, under, like, like the, like the Unabomber? No. <laughs> yeah, just like the Unabomber. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. you know, they get, they're like naked in their cabin wiping blood all over them. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, in actuality, actually, I prefer to work that way. I prefer... Under, I like mean, a there, pressure cooker almost. There are some people who prefer to work in... You heard it here first. He's the Unabomber. Kind of, you can kind of go somewhere and blow off steam when you're yeah. not working. Right. Whereas I prefer an environment where you're isolated and you're just working. And and uh, and that's kind of what I did with Shannon, um, even though it was still at, at my house. You know, I basically picked him up at the airport on, on that Friday evening, and we didn't stop Let's working. Let's do this, yeah. But, you know, we, I mean, we ate, uh, and we, uh, we ended up having a meal with some friends, but that was about it. It was just like work, 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 work until 2.30 on Monday afternoon. That yeah, like it sounded like you, you guys were exhausted. <laughs> That's a, a point. That sounds exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so, did um, you know? Uh, hold on, I'm sorry, Clay. Oh, no, did ahead. you know that our theme was written by John Ashfield? Uh, and, no, I did not. Yeah, but, but, that, you know, I mean, John's an old friend of mine. That that you know, yeah. John and I have worked mm-hmm. together a lot on a lot of his different projects and things. Yeah, uh, actually, I don't know if we ever thanked him for creating our theme. Well, let's thank because him. Thank when we you. did our first two episodes, we didn't have the theme yet. So right. thank oh, you, John. So the, the, thank you, John. The debut of the theme is yes. this episode. Oh. <laughs> no, it's actually in the it's in the first it's two. The first but we two, recorded but the first oh. two before the theme was ready. Right. So oh, ta da! I got gotcha. you. Podcast magic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, John's great. John's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the questions that we came up with for you is that you have such an interesting last name. What is the nationality, of, um, Mr. Exifus? No way. Um, <laughs> well, what, I- what, <laughs> Okay, actually, so there's... There... Is that a real name? <laughs> yeah, I love when I get that question, because I've gotten that question What's before. What's your real name? Yeah, exactly. No, um, uh, there's actually a couple different ways to pronounce it. Um, Zephos is what I tell people, because it's like Xerox, you know, right. it just it's kind of like there. But uh, there's actually a phonetic way in Greek, because it's Greek, uh, to pronounce it, um, where the the X and the E are kind of an E-C-K-S sound. So it's Xephos. So yeah. are you Greek and Mexican? <laughs> no. Well, it, says in your, it says in your Facebook. 
you, I'd like you to believe everything you read on Facebook. It's Greek and Italian. Greek. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> you like feta cheese? It's all right. Okay. Racist. No. <laughs> What do you do to bluff? Racial Epstein? profiling. Besides music, what's something that you do to bluff, Steam? That's not even one of the questions, but uh, I mean, you look like you work out. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we just got some guns. Um, actually, I don't really spend enough time blowing off steam. You know, oh, uh, you have it all wound up. Yeah, it's it's kind of a problem right now. I mean, you know, I mean, I enjoy you know some downtime watching TV with my boyfriend and Malice things like stuff. that. You know, but uh, or you know, going out and drinking with friends or having friends over, you know, things like that. You know, just like whatever any older person would do. Sure, <laughs> older, <yeah>. right? <laughs> well, I'm, well, here's I'm a question I found that I, I I thought might be interesting to ask you. What? Uh, how do you handle mistakes during a performance or, or a DJ session? Oh, I or love them. Intense. Like I love them. You love them? Yeah, because that's what makes it's, it's mistakes that. That's what makes it human. Wait, what, what would be a mistake? Real. Where do we but commit? A lot of these, <laughs> descri- yeah, describe a mistake, what, what, and I would doubt that if I was on the floor, I would think it was a mistake. I that's think it, why. That, I think exactly. it's DJ doing one of his things. Right, that's the, that's the whole thing. The audience doesn't, doesn't really perceive a mistake. Mm-hmm. You know, the only time an audience would perceive a mistake is if you telegraph it as a mistake. Uh, Oops. <laughs> right, exactly. Oops, everybody. Well, sorry about that. Because oh. DJs do that thing where they do pause. Like I don't, I'm not a big dancer anymore. But there's like music and they're DJing, and all of a sudden there's that like <laughs> silence, and that probably has a name, a silence or a pause in music. Break. A break. Um, what do you mean, like you mean like, like there's a like purposeful a, pause? Yeah, purposeful pause. Like I like it's just set in there. Just, um, uh, yeah, I can't remember what that's called right now. You, you know, all right, I'm on the pressure. Well, don't, don't the, B, the B-52s <laughs> I'm, I'm almost gonna celebrate you. some of their mistakes, like on some of their records, like well, they'll, I mean, they'll, yeah, absolutely. They'll start and they'll go, what? Oh. <laughs> right, exactly. That's the whole thing. Again, and leave it in. You know, recordings can be recordings are artifice ultimately, and it could be like a blessing to the mistake. Right, that's the whole thing. It could lead you to a place that you never expected, and that's the whole idea of being human in that regard. So in, in that, again, recordings are mechanical and artifice, and you know, and can create these things that are, are sound bigger than life. But then all of a sudden, you get a mistake, and there's life right there, and so it brings it right back down. Well, cool. Well, bringing things back down, we have some topics to talk about, and we'd like to invite you to join us. Sure. A lot of topics so here. we're going to kind of mix things up since we're talking about music. What about music that we listen to now versus music we used to listen to? Oh. Yeah. We get to well, the, the detachable penis song was just everywhere on K Rock. <laughs> Are you sick of hearing that though? Actually, earlier I was thinking of like just things and like you know, it's it's kind of funny. So I mean, it literally was everywhere on K Rock, and in fact, oh. in 1993, when that when that record was big, uh, wiggling my fingers, um, <laughs> it was not, actually there, there was actually three different radio stations in LA playing went, it, and and it was. But what's weird is that the rest of the country, the rest of the country was not really underneath the detachable penis fever. <laughs> oh, no. you know? But then Wait, in another place that we, what that was it was really popular was in Toronto. And oh. on this uh, video channel called Much Music. So whenever I would visit places like L.A. or you know places in Canada, that's where I would get recognized. Right, right, right. And then I wouldn't get the recognized in these other in these other places. And it you know so it was very you know regional and very you know <laughs> it, it was kind of weird that way. But L.A. and L.A. is just a weird thing. I mean, they still play the Tatooine yeah. in they L.A. Do. for sure. Yeah, I still hear it on the radio here every now and then. Yeah, every now and then. I mean, it's it's a recurrent. I just know like, like you got associated <laughs> with it, and you're like, I'm more than just a detachable penis. Well, well you know, I mean, it's weird. It's my legacy. Yeah, it's, know, it's, so. it's, good. it's, it's good to have one thing. You know? All right. Embrace it. Yeah, and I, I mean, well, even nowadays, there's so many. There's a lot okay. of places nowadays that you couldn't get away with playing a song by the name of Detachable Penis on the radio. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously that's why it got played a lot right. at the time. I mean, you know, it, it, it was kind of a weird record because it was sort of a comedy record and the queer scene. And a lot of times, you know, you know, comedy. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to identify as a band. Oh, that was a band. Oh, that. Oh, oh I just thought that that was that goofy record. <laughs> you know, that goofy comedy thing. Well, it's I mean, almost like the, f- the Daily Show is now. One of the main news outlets in the country, you know, it started off as a comedy show. <laughs> well, it still is a comedy show, and John Stewart will always say that he's a comedian. That's all he is. Uh, right. So. I was going to say that, that I was on that 1979, 80 when I was a freshman. It was like I either could have been into the hard rock, long hair metal bands, 
but I chose to go into the alternate music, like Eurythmics and um, Missing Persons and things like that. that were like, you we always that question? I'm answering the question. What, were you always from Southern California? Yes, born oh, and raised. Okay. There you go. Yeah. See, I grew up in upstate New York, and I was one of those little punk rock kids. We were like social distortion, suicidal tendencies, like Black Flag. That was kind of my scene, actually. But my very first alterna- alternative record ever was the Violent Femmes. Where, where in upstate? Uh, New York, Ithaca. Oh, it's good, Ithaca, cool. New York. Oh, wow. yeah. Really? I know I'm from Long Island. Oh, so. yeah. Well, I get, I, you, yeah. you still have a, a twang. Yeah, an I, island twang. I've, I've tried to. But I listen to like <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> but mine was like all like punk rock throughout high school, and then I moved well, into Riot Girl, and that, now I'm like I still listen to like a lot of Riot Girl music, like Sleater Kinney and. Mm-hmm. I'm still a riot girl. <laughs> Bikini Kill. And all yeah, Bikini Kill. Oh, all those. Yeah, L7 is forever. The, the new band. What's her name's new band? It's got a name. Isn't it like a woman's name? Oh, I can't remember now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. Not La Tigre. No, 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 no. Uh, the L7 one, right? Oh, no, no, not the L7 one. Um, what's, oh, her, what's her name shit. from... from uh, White, Yari, from White Portland. Ships. No, 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 no. The one from Portland. who's Carrie Bronstein's new oh, band. Yeah, from Sleater Kinney. It's yeah. called... Um, um, like ship, it's like what I have heard it. Yeah, okay. It's right. on my iPod. All right. Well, here I we go. Like five minutes from now, and be like, hey. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I love this girls. I am such a lesbian. <laughs> no, I grew up in Virginia Beach, so it's like that's like, which I guess had a little bit of a music scene, but a lot of it was just taking all the hints from from DC. So I grew up listening to a lot of DC hardcore, and actually oh, still wow. listen to a lot of DC hardcore. Cool. That's I've never even heard that phrase before. Well, like uh, Minor Threat. Um, Rights of Spring, Fugazi, uh, a lot of the Discord stuff. <laughs> the, the monuments, so, like the Lincoln Monument, the Washington Monument. Yeah. Like, no, Clay, I don't think bad that's what awesome, about. but they had actually a lot of homophobic <laughs> lyrics in them, but I love the Bad Brains. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to date <laughs> myself and let you know that my first 8-track um, that I ever bought eight tracks, was, a, was a Carpenter's 8-track, and it was... <laughs> Totally into disco. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, totally You're dating disco. yourself, but I'm yeah. sure the sex is fabulous. <laughs> and when I was when I turned eighteen in Virginia you could drink beer, so I was a beer tender at a discotheque and all my friends loved me because I could let friends in at the door you know Wasn't at the door. That awesome that you could drink beer when you're eighteen. Well Wasn't the, that great? the only reason I got hired is because I didn't drink. Oh. <laughs> so, oh wow. And they're like, You're perfect. <laughs> we'll take you. <laughs> And you actually said, I don't drink? And, yeah, I said, I don't know if you're going to hire me because I don't drink. They're like, no, you don't know. That's really big here. We like that. Yeah. Wild Flag. shots and stuff. Carrie's right. band. Wild, Wild Flag. Flag. That's it. Wild Flag. Wild Who inspired Flag. you? when you? What were you doing when you were uh, a wee tot teenager? Oh, my God. Well, Chris. I mean, there's so much music. I mean, you know, I mean. Was it like a type or? Was it like a type? Um, well, I mean, I love great songs. And, um, you know, I mean, when I was really young, I. You know, when I was in like fifth grade and stuff, I used to listen to American Top Forty. I used to bring an AM radio to school, uh, and oh, that's um, cute. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, in fact, actually, I, I knew when they played the number one song. They played it like every two hours, and so I would then be like, "Oh, it's time!" And I would like put on my little headphone and turn it on and listen to my favorite song, and then put it back in the desk. And then, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, I was You're way right. super. Talk into about it. dating yourself. I remember when Ten Q. When the radio stations were AM, and then when they all switched to FM, right, exactly. I was at the beach when the, <laughs> the when the when the top forty <laughs> pop funny. radio stations switched to FM. You know, so I, I, you know, there was a lot of you know pop songs from the late seventies and stuff that I really loved. And then at some point, I got uh, turned on to sort of punk rock things and whatever, and kind of went from there. Oh. Before punk, I went into punk because I thought it would sound cooler to talk about my punk days. But before that, my walls were covered with like Cindy Lauper and Thompson Twins and Wham and Duran Duran. Mm-hmm. Wham, that was I before that. Wham. Wham concerts. That was always that Wham. Yeah, well, that's a good question. What What's your first concert, Clay? That you ever went to live concert? My first concert. It would have been. Uh, I think it was the Eagles in the San Eagles? Diego. Yeah, wow. I was it was mm-hmm. I was totally mm-hmm. stoked, man. Mm-hmm. I went to the Eagles. Do you know where it was? Was it in the stadium or it a, was the arena um, thing in San Diego? The round. Oh, oh, it's changed names a couple times, but I know I what, you're, know what talking you're talking about. about. Anyway, 
Like it's like an outdoor venue, like, an, was, like an amphitheater. No, it was indoors oh. in, in San Diego, and it's oh. it's just down. Oh, and it was like the a sports a, arena. Yeah, it was a really, oh, a sports a really arena. big yeah. deal yeah. back then. Now it's like you look at it and you're like, oh. That's Tim, what was small. your first experience? Or, I sorry. was trying to think of that, and I really for you the life remember became, your first concert. I oh don't my God. remember. I've, I, I remember mine. Remember. I'll I'll tell mine while you remember yours, sure. Tim. This is Vito. I went to. Uh, Missing Persons at the Greek Theater. That's awesome. Nice. In a limousine with my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. And she got me drunk. I love oh, you that. mean you weren't doing cocaine? No. <laughs> and we had gone and bought an outfit. <laughs> we had bought an outfit for me, and it was the parachute pants with all the pockets. Oh. And all. Oh, is there a picture we can post online? Oh, I don't know. Oh, we need to find and that. And a yeah, cotton yeah, shirt. What's your all name? white cotton what's, shirt. What's your girlfriend's name? Her name was Carol. Carol, we need a picture. With, with black black sleeves so it was a white shirt with black sleeves all cotton everything was cotton back then yeah except the parachute what? Wait, yeah. wait, 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 what what is what's their lo- what's their motto you know the for life or something Co- it's the fabric, fabric of your life. life yeah fabric of life <laughs> zoe de chanel so who was the concert oh missing person missing person yeah. awesome. okay so in ithaca what was well, your i actually went to a lot of shows like this little shows at bars and stuff like at the lost horizons in syracuse new york and stuff like that um but i think the first huge concert i went to was echo and the bunnymen oh, i go to the bunnymen up at cornell it's a good right? first one yeah, yeah, yeah i remember first one yeah Did i was thinking the bunnymen no, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was probably like at the Peppermint Beach Club or someplace like that, but I don't remember oh, who it was. Do you remember the tour, the Echo and Benjamin one? Which, what, what year it would have been? It was probably... Was it 85? No, no, it was... No, I was no, I was too young then. Oh, so eighty seven then. Yeah, it was eighty seven. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. it was between. It was when I was in high school, so yeah, it was probably so like eighty seven. So after yeah. Bring on the Dancing Horses, I saw the the band, the Specials, yes, and nice. the Go Go's. <laughs> but the, the week, same show. The week, yes. The, because oh because uh, Jane Weedland was going out with uh, Terry Hall at the time, they, uh-huh. and they wrote "Our Lips Are Sealed" together. Uh-huh. Oh wow! Um, and um, Jane's a local here. She's yeah, in town. Yeah. Right, exactly. And um, so, uh, yeah, I saw the, the spe- and and it was the week before the Go Go's first album was out. And, oh my god! And I remember Gina Shock like. Uh, flipping off the audience as they walked off stage. <laughs> That's hardcore for that time. Yeah. That's fucking bad. Yeah, yeah. I thought that that, 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 that it was great, and that was like, yeah. I was that was uh, summer of 1981. Well, a lot of people show. forget that they're really from that whole sort of punk rock scene. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and even and like Belinda just, Carlisle was like pretty yeah, hardcore it was, for the time. Was, uh, but that was a. I, I remember I danced the entire time for the specials and it was like on this weird rickety bleachers it was uh, the, the the show was on a uh, pier in new york and there were bleachers on either side of the pier and, and oh, we were like, awesome. dancing on the sounds so retro we could talk for a long time i have great <laughs> yeah, memories yeah, yeah. Seeing we're, madness, we're, we're running out of time madness dead or alive oh yeah at the yeah. palladium yes, well me. as we um get ready to wrap things up here um, oh we um, we didn't talk about my favorite topic. Yeah, we, what is we, that? we have to talk. We have to talk about it really quickly because one of the things we we all had dinner at my house yesterday, and one thing Mike Mike noticed when he walked in the bathroom, baby he's like, wipe. "There's baby wipes in the Every toilet." Every household has baby wipes in the back of the toilet. Yours was like flowery. Your container was like flowery. You must have like of course. expensive baby wipes. So well, so so th- is that the first time you'd seen baby wipes? No, but I just it just clucked on my head. Baby, they're not I baby them wipes. They're everywhere. They're That's not, right. They're not baby. They're flushable. Wipes. They're moistened towels. Yeah, right. Because we I don't have them at my house, but every I feel like I'm I'm something's wrong with me because I don't have baby wipes at my house. You have a dirty ass. I don't That's what's wrong no, with you. Clean. <laughs> well, I don't really need like I'm I'm super regular. Like I take one dump in the morning and then I shower and that's like it all day. But is it so why are they just like gay houses? Is it like a cleanliness thing or is it because gays are need to be ready to get plowed or something? So they're no, to be really clean. It's got nothing to do with that. Well, that's what I thought. Cause, my ew, but my boyfriend, my my boyfriend has my boyfriend has been using wipes for a very long time, and so now that we're together, he's kind of gotten me into it as well. But there's actually I was listening to. Uh, this radio show, um, and they were there was a they were talking about how uh, Cottonelle. I'm sorry, I mentioned the brand, uh, but uh, that they are they're, 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 It's a big campaign <laughs> to kind of get people to use these wipes. Uh, sure, yeah, there's actually yeah. a lot of straight people that do it too. Oh, I know some dudes that. that yeah, that will do that rather than toilet. I'm just laughing that I'm going to take no, away no, no, tonight not, that Chris and your not, boyfriend has clean asses. It's not either <laughs> or. Yeah, I, I actually really enjoy it. But Chris, tell us. 
what you were thinking as you came over here. <laughs> well, no, I, that's what I was thinking. I mean, this was so weird because He's I listened. Because I listened, I listened to the first two podcasts, and then I was, you know, I was uh, using the bathroom, <laughs> and I was thinking like. And I looked at this baby wipe, and I, oh, baby wipe, excuse me, flushable wipe, <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Oh my God, are they going to talk about these?" You know, I really, I it was so weird, this weird psychic thing, and then all of a sudden, you guys are like so, talking about it. So like, we can't oh talk about important topic. Well, I read an article a few weeks ago where they were talking about, you know, is toilet paper. Enough, you know, and um, <laughs> well, well, again, that's you, this you, company right. trying to get their exactly the flushable uh, wipes. Now. You were going to think differently, Chris, after he says what and, he's saying. And right one, now. Of the, one of the commentators said, "Well, um, let me take a shit on your arm, and you wipe it off with toilet paper, and you tell me how clean you think you are." So, so those wipes <laughs> kind of sound well, really that, good, right? okay? <laughs> I was like, well, when you put it that way. I think I want to start That's using them. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Who would shit on my arm? First of all, has now increased the time in the bathroom for me like 100%. Oh. So now I have to take all this much more time as well now I have to, as well as I have to flush twice. I I flush with the toilet paper and then I flush with the flushable wipes. Getting so, no Chris. So there's pros and cons. Yeah, exactly. You're you're killing the environment, but you're walking around with a clean ass. And the, this is you see the toilet paper commercial with the bear and the dingleberries. Yeah. There's a little bear running around. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but they don't say dingleberries. They're just like, want to be clean, Klingons. <laughs> well, we, we've gone over, so we'll probably have to do some editing here. But um, our tradition, Chris, when we end the show, is we go around the room and we give back scratches to people that we think deserve and need back scratches. And so. Let's start with Mike. Mike, who do you want to back scratch? Um, I never think about it ahead of time, or unless I do and I forget. But I want to um, back scratch my friends in LA last week that let me stay with them on the couch because I know I wasn't an easy guest. There you go. Because it was a very <laughs> self indulgent trip that one of my friends brought to my attention. So thank you for letting me stay at your house. <laughs> self indulgent trip. Yes. Okay. All righty. We'll skip on over to Tim. Actually, I've got a lot this oh, time. <laughs> well, it'll be quick. So, back scratches are to James, Anderson, Dave, uh, Tyrone, and Greg at the lookout. Um, everybody that comes to Bear Coffee at Cafe Flora on Thursdays. Um, Dave and the SF Movie Bears for the mention in their last email blast Thank for you. Bear Element. Um, all the 619 Bears, Scott and Bruiser.com, um, Brendan for being a good sport, and Darwin. Mike, Leon, and Alex for the project that they've been working on. So that's all I got. Back scratches, y'all. Yeah, that's, I used to write my list down too, and I haven't been doing it. So Vito, go. <laughs> I like to be well, I would like to definitely back scratch Clay oh, and his awesome. partner Bill for the and great Scarlet. and yeah, Scarlet. 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 Oh, bitch, she's a lady. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for having us well. at their house for dinner last night. Oh. That was really a nice treat. It's our pleasure. Yes, yes. And I I'd do like have dish pan hands. Back scratch, Chris, for coming and talking with us tonight and hanging out. It's very accommodating to our yeah. nonsense. Yes. <laughs> sort of speak. Well, I will say, I thank you for your back scratches, and I second the ones to Vita or to um, Bill and to um, Scarlett because they, okay. they had to put up with all of you. Yes. Uh, but, they loved um, us. And mm. thank you, um, Chris, for coming and let me mangle, sure. mangle your name and it's, it's, <laughs> talk about it's, baby wipes for us. Wor- it's been much mangled, much worse. But any, quite fine. anybody who is he's wiping his ass thinks those bitches at that bear podcast are going to talk about this. Anybody you, you'd like you, to back to? Okay. Um, really, just uh, just my boyfriend Jeremy. Yeah. Okay. And it's clean ass. <laughs> introduce you to baby for, wipes. For introducing me to a cleaner ass. Uh, you know? uh, <laughs> I imagine a picture of you with all the edges softened. <laughs> this nice. this could be your second legacy, Chris. <laughs> all right. Well, we've never really had a clean goodbye. Let's Maybe we should, use wipes. Too. we should use baby wipes. I scratched we'll, we'll Wolf's go from back. back. Scratches you, to Wolfie's okay. back. Of okay. sitting over there and being patient. And <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, Wolfie. Turning buttons. I always all like right. to end with. Don't we all end with our different things? Well, I always like to say, "Smell you later." Smell you later. <laughs> but that's what I say. That, Clay that's, says good day. That's my thing. Smell you later. Because it rhymes with Clay. Smell you Very later. Very regional, eh? God. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Smell you later, what? Chris. <laughs> that's like that. Another of the body. Bye. Well, were you going to say something, Tim? No. Okay. No, I was just like, bye.
right, we will have here. to come up with. We say good night. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. All right, good night. Good night or good day. Good day. A B C. Goodbye. Nineties hip hop. See you next Tuesday. Oh yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> Visit us at bearelement.com.